Welcome to this episode of On Finding Peace, brought to you by Life's Journey Life Coaching. Our host, Chris Shea, is a counselor, nationally recognized speaker, and author on topics of guiding us to finding peace in our daily lives. Learn more about Chris Shea by visiting his website, www.lifesjourneyblog.com. Before we begin, I'd like to uh, welcome all of you to this episode of On Finding Peace, and I appreciate all of you tune in to listen. Uh, I'm uh, very honored to have a guest today, and uh, uh, she is an author, uh, and it's uh, Elena Vasilenka, who has written the book, a nice long title, I'll get through the title. Uh, the book is called I Am Happy, How to Go from Being a Happy Mess to True Happiness. So welcome, it's great to have you. Thank you so much, Chris. I'm honored and so happy to be here with you. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Great. Uh, well, it's great to have you on um, because what was fascinating when I saw your book and then uh, later read the book that the t- title itself is what caught my attention on there. And, uh, you know, to find out, you know, what does happy mass mean and all, which we will get into on this. But uh, the title really caught my attention, so I, I was quite intrigued and uh, very well, um, you know, pleased with, with reading the book. Uh, so if you can uh, maybe slow in and uh, introduce yourself to the audience and tell us a little bit about who you are, and we'll get into your book as well. Wonderful. Well, thank you guys so much for watching and listening to us. I'm Elena. Uh, Vasilenka, this is my book that you just mentioned. I am happy. Okay, this way and this way. <laughs> okay. uh, I don't know, but I am happy. And um, I'm a teacher in Santa Monica. I teach Shakti Nam Yoga, and it's a spiritual practice that I became a, um, a student of while modeling in New York City. And it changed my life. Like, you know, I will get into it in, 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 in a moment, but it changed my life so much that I left New York. I left the modeling industry. I left the relationship in New York and moved to Santa Monica to study more and to heal because I needed a lot of healing in my life. So the book just came out in November. It became number one on Amazon for uh, Canada and uh, Mexico in the yoga section in the US. I'm very, very blessed, but it just kind of come through me. It wasn't like I wasn't planning to write it, but the journey that I got into the last five years became quite a journey that um, I felt like I had to share my story. That's 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 me. <laughs> Wonderful. And uh, so all the way over here, I'm uh, over here in Maryland, and we just uh, got our first snowfall today, or yesterday uh, is when it snowed. And, uh, so it's very nice to see that for the first time this season, and um, I personally hope for more, but that's just me. Um, so what uh, what kind of inspired you to write this book? And you had just mentioned that you were a model in New York, and, you know, that, that seemed to be a big switch, I would think, you know, going uh, that type of career into writing a book on happiness. And yes, and teaching spirituality, which, you know, I never really envisioned that I would be doing. I kind of had my life set. I was in New York, you know, with a great agency in a, in a great relationship that I thought at the time. But mm-hmm. I was struggling for many years like since I was actually um, like five years old. I had developed an eating disorder and depression, which I didn't realize actually at that time what it was. Right, I was just eating too many cookies and chocolates and uh, obsessing, you know, like I couldn't stop. Like when I was mm-hmm. eating so sweet, I couldn't stop, and that would help me to feel better. And it went into full on manic depression. Um, I was even diagnosed with bipolar and um, OCD at mm-hmm. around 19, 20 years old. And I was prescribed, I was put on all kinds of different drugs, Prozac and everything. And mm-hmm. I just knew that. It's not the answer. Like I did not want to go that route. So I started researching and praying for answers and doing as much as possible to find out how to heal myself mm-hmm. um, around 19 because 
my disorder, like eating disorder and depression got pretty bad that, you know, by 2021, I was actually suicidal a couple of times mm -hmm. once in my life because I didn't know how to cope with it. Uh, and I've tried traditional methods, I've tried therapy, i tried groups, you know, like Overeaters Anonymous and um, Binge Eaters Anonymous. And I, I just couldn't, nothing was helping me. And I also didn't look like I had a problem, you know. I was modeling in Toronto before New York. And I always, you know, worked out, I was skinny. Um, and I always had a big smile on my face. Like mm -hmm. you know, back even in high school when I was going through depression, Nobody knew that because I was always smiling and people saying, wow, you're so happy, when right. look, I'm happier. So I had to like feel like I had to fake it because everybody was expecting me to be happy. But mm -hmm. you know, behind the closed doors at home, I would binge. I would also, um, it's, a, it's a type of OCD disorder where you just pick your face and hurt like you know, the scars on my face. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was a really big problem because I was covering it with a you know a lot of makeup but it wasn't working and I had to like cancel a lot of photo shoots uh, and it was it, it was creating an issue. Right. So, yeah, so throughout my search I became a holistic health coach. I went to Institute of Integrative Nutrition in New York City, thinking that you know I need to learn about supplements maybe to heal my depression. Uh, in my book you probably read I was on constant detox spa tour. Mm -hmm. I went to every detox spa in the country. And some spas I stayed for five, six weeks thinking that if I just lock myself in a controlled environment where there is no sugar, there is no coffee, no access to stuff, that when I come out of it, I will be okay. Um, right. And I'm never okay. Like every year I would have to go and hope that I will be better, you know, this time. And it never worked. And I knew that something was missing like deep, deep, deep inside me, that it wasn't actually a physical problem anymore because on the physical mm -hmm. level, I was taking all the supplements, doing all the you know, physical, I mean, therapy, talk therapy, hypnosis, I could, but nothing was going you know, to work for me. Mm -hmm. So I uh, encountered um, a meeting with a spiritual teacher in New York City who teaches Nam Yoga. He is mm -hmm. a master of world renowned mystic, a musician is in, in, in the spiritual work, you know, like his music is very well known. And uh, my modeling agent actually suggested I try to meet with him. And mm -hmm. life changing, the first class, the first meeting, I was thinking like, whatever that is, is so weird because, you know, I was a New Yorker, like living in Park Avenue and I mm -hmm. did thing that looked so weird, you know, breathing through the nose, chanting like the words, from cultures that I don't even know about, uh, but I never felt happier. Just after one mm. class, I felt so much peace that I knew that something was working. Mm -hmm. And first year, I went to Nam yoga class every single day. Mm. And I did breath work that I learned there on my own every day. I did meditation every single day for three hours. Like I know I had a lot of challenges so I knew that I had to go in all the way in like, you know, mm -hmm. half, an hour, half in the morning or half in the, in the evening and after about seven months years work I woke up one day and I said whoa what like what, what's going on mm -hmm. I'm not depressed I'm not miserable I don't hate myself because I used to really hate myself uh, and I had a lot of negative self-talk in my head how mm -hmm. horrible ugly fat unloved what a loser I was. And, you know, and I couldn't really show it on the outside because on the outside I looked completely the opposite. Mm -hmm. um, so so that, that's what inspired me to start writing. I started writing around six years ago and it had a different title and everything. But I said, look, if I'm feeling so good after just seven months, after around 20 years of struggling and I did not take any medication and breath, it's free, right? It's under your nose. Mm -hmm. uh, anyone can do it. Anyone in the world can do it. I felt like I had a responsibility to start sharing this with those who are suffering because when I was suffering, I wish I knew that sooner. You know, it would save me a lot of money and mm -hmm. a lot of trouble. Except I would not have to go through almost killing myself. 
So, so yeah, that's it, that really seems fascinating that you can from all of the professional treatments all around the country and nothing is working and then all of a sudden you touch with you know this type of yoga and from day one it, it changes your life yes it's i didn't i didn't have any expectation when my agent said just try it just go i said mm -hmm. i have nothing to lose it was the first of january and you know how you like try to do something different right for the new year so i did yeah. go the people in the class they were so filled with positivity and light and energy and i was so closed off and so like dark at that time mm -hmm. i saw them i'm like i don't know what these people are on like you know there's all this breath work yep. but something is happening to them that they're so positive and i want to be like them so yeah that's you know mm -hmm. truly a miracle but not really because you know as you might know now there's so many studies that meditation and breath work and repeating positive affirmations and mantra work on our brain and it changes mm -hmm. the plasticity of your brain and it allows your brain to clean out the negative garbage. Because right. what I've, you know, and you probably uh, tell me if you agree that um, no one can clean our mind. You can go to doctors and therapists all you want and talk and talk and talk about your problems, but there is no magic pill. There is no magic mm -hmm. doctor that will clean negative, destructive thought patterns. Unfortunately, it would be easy, you know, if you take the pill and you okay. can go, right? But it takes takes time, it takes discipline, and I I find and I agree with the research and studies that meditation is the most safest and surest way to come to happiness from being a happy mess. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and there's been a lot of studies out there, and, I, and I'm really pleased with studies because when I first got into the counseling field a, a number of decades ago, all of this, this meditationfulness and yogas, that was all taboo. You know, that was, uh, you know, let the religions do that and was on, you know, strict counseling and medication and, you know, all this that works. Right. But I really found through the years that when people would do the meditations and some of the holistic healings that it really did work for them. So I'm very pleased that we have the scientific studies to back it up to say that this, you know, there's more to this than just a religion. This is actually truth. This is actually verifiable. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, yes, yeah, so, you know, so there's science and then there is practical, you know, practical experience like mine. And I, I swear by it now. And I, Right in my book, then there's days, you know, then I don't want to meditate. Like, I'm like, oh, I got it. Like, I'm done for so many years. <laughs> I'm going to skip today. And then I, like, skip a couple of days, three, four, five days, go down the road, and I start feeling cuckoo again. Like, my mind becomes negative. I expect mm -hmm. from the world, and I'm anxious. And I'm like, oh, wow, it's this great experiment because I remember now how I used to feel like this all the time. And now I need to get back myself on the mat to meditate because I do not want to feel like this again. Right. So, yeah. So it, it kind of, you know, it's like a muscle when you go to the gym, right? Like you have to continue doing it, mm -hmm. but eventually, you know, you become more stable and more, more positive and you basically kind of don't need to do it for, I think, three hours per day like I did. Well, what do you think was the big change for you that, you know, going to the yoga and really, I guess, had mine, but no huge expectation. What do you think was the key that actually made this so different for you that it resonated in you and, and changed your life? Well, you know, I actually, well, I've tried, so I want to just be very clear, like, you know, about the, because the book says, you know, I'm a Nam yoga teacher, which I am, so people mm -hmm. might think it's like, they would have to stand on their head for five hours, <laughs> while saying positive affirmations. It's not like that because yoga means, in, in uh, scriptures, it means unity. And it's mm -hmm. unity of your heart with the divine love, the unconditional love. So this is type of yoga that we do is not physical yoga where you work on your abs, for example, right? Or your right. Stretching, stretching and flexibility. It's the yoga that works on your heart. 
and yoga mm-hmm. that works on your soul. Because all of us, like I think, I know actually that my addictions, right, and my eating disorder, they were all from traumas, right, like early childhood traumas and traumas throughout the, uh, you know, formative years, mm-hmm. and from feeling unloved. In lack of love, creates all kinds of addictions. You know, everyone is addicted to something, right? Most of us are addicted to something. Cookies, pizza, drinks, smoking, you name it. And exactly. are just the replacement of that hole that people are trying to feel. And the hole in their heart, everybody wants to be unconditionally loved. And everybody mm-hmm. wants to experience that and know that they're worthy, that they're good enough, they're loved. Somebody needs them. And when you... Think that you're, you know, something happened in your life that made you feel otherwise. We all start looking for answers, but like myself, I was looking for answers, you know, sugar and um, sometimes too much alcohol, definitely too much caffeine. And I used to write journals. Like I actually picked up my journal from 21 year old, um, and I, it was a long 14 years ago now. And I was saying I feel lo- so lonely, and I feel like sugar is my only friend. Mm-hmm. I feel that there is no, I don't know how to find the answer and to change that. Uh, but I also used to write it, I believe, and I'm going to continue to believe that the answer will come. So I never lost faith. I've always, always asked for the answer to come, but I did not know what the answer was. So for me, it's like that lack of love that was so dominant in my life was healed through finding my own connection, that yoga, mm-hmm. the unity of my heart with the higher divine love or universe or whatever people call it. Right? You can call it God, you can call it energy, whatever you call mm-hmm. it, you need to develop that connection. You can work on your physical body with your physical yoga or physical workout all you want, but if you don't have the connection in your heart to something bigger than you, mm-hmm. you never will be truly happy. Like I had all the six pack you want, like I had three trainers. I was, you know, belonging to three different gyms and, mm. and nothing was bringing me satisfaction as this type of yoga. So and I'm, I know it's a long answer to your question, you know, why this type of yoga? Because Nam in Sanskrit means the word. And mm. we work with the power of the word and the power of the sound. So in my book, I provide around 19 different techniques. Some of them are yogic mantras that people can work with uh, to work on their um, healing their heart, bringing more self-love into their life. Or there's a mantra that I talk about that provides you to find your true purpose in life and true vacation. Because for a very long time, another source of my depression was I did not really know what I was here for. And I think a lot of people are going through that. Like they have their jobs, but they don't really love them, right? They're just going autopilot. And it's so important for our spirit to do what we love because that when you do what you love, it heals you. And I think partially part of my healing happened because I found what I love. I found that teaching now and working with people, working with clients was my purpose. But for a very long time, I did not know what it was. So I'm um, yeah, so I'm providing that mantra as well to help people find that. Um, there is some techniques, breath work that works on parts of our brain. I can share later if, if you like to. That mm-hmm. allows us to remove traumatic memories from childhood, because what happens if there's trauma that is stored on your subconscious mind, right? You might think you're okay, but the patterns are still there, and we act on autopilot, mm-hmm. and that's from this reactive part of us, like the animalistic part of us that doesn't even know why we do certain things. But maybe because at three year old you had somebody to hurt you and now whenever something happens that reminds your subconscious about it, you react in a certain way or you go and you hurt yourself or you drink too much or whatever. So so that's the yoga that I'm teaching. That's the yoga that this book is talking about. You know there's Yoga for the body is also very important. I'm all mm-hmm. about, but this is the yoga for healing your heart. Right. And and I appreciate you sharing this. I don't know how many people out there are aware of the different yogas. You know, and, and I know for myself.
myself, I was aware that there were different yoga traditions, but prior to, uh, you know, hearing what you're saying all the way in your book, but, you know, hearing this, I always assumed it was always physical. I, I didn't realize myself that traditions are the uh, non-physical ones. So it, it's great to bring that up. And, and I also think that purpose in life is one of the key things that messes a lot of people up. That, that you know, we're looking for, you know, why are we here? You know, what's the point to this? And I, I think that's the key. If, if we can find, uh, you know, something to do that we love that's, that's more than just that's that's probably going to help us to understand what a purpose you know is in life. Absolutely, hundred percent. And actually, for a very long time before I found Nam Yoga, I used to do the exercise that a lot of um, positive from you know positive development people teach. Maybe you've heard about it, and it's in the book. It's the million dollar exercise. Mm -hmm. So probably for like ten years, I would sit myself down and close my eyes and imagine that I have a million dollars in my day what would I do? And I never had like a direct answer, but I always felt like I want to do something that will help people and help people in whichever way I can. So I wasn't sure what it was, but it was, you know, the work that I had was I was selling vitamins. I'm like, maybe that is, you know, mm -hmm. that is it. but I knew that it wasn't the final work that modeling. I'm like, well, that's not helping people. Like it just pays well, but I'm not happy doing that. Like I'm just standing like a mannequin. So, I did this exercise for a very long while, and then finally worked. I actually found, it, it, the, the what I do now found me, like I wasn't looking for it, right? I, I, was, I was looking for something, I wasn't looking specifically for Nam Yoga, but it found me. So I hope that, you know, this can help some of our readers and listeners who don't know what they want, but they're not currently happy in their career, that they can also use this technique and just, you have to believe, when you do this, you have to believe that the answer will come because the universe always answers. It might not answer a way, it might not answer the way you would like to be answered, but it hears you, it hears your prayers, and it brings you the answer, the perfect answer at the right time. Right. And and I definitely believe that. And, and I've heard from so many other very similar to what you had just said that, you know, it, it's more so when you find in your life what your purpose is, it's usually that found you versus you finding it. You know, that, that all of a sudden through whatever it is, that pops up and then here it is, you know. So with you with the Nam Yoga and, you know, I've heard many other people that, so I, I think part of the encouragement might be in, you know, for those who are saying, you know, well, I can't find it, searching for it, you know, what's the purpose? It, it might be to just kind of sit tight for a while and that purpose is more than likely going to find you. Absolutely. And if I may just advise as well to never ever lose hope and mm. keep bugging the universe. Keep saying, okay, I don't know what it is, but I want to find out. I want to be of service because I think truly there's, you cannot be fully happy unless you do something of service to others. And that could be anything, right? It could be making paper napkins with cute smiley faces on them that make people happy, or it could mm -hmm. be traveling the world, you know, shooting an amazing movie. Like, it doesn't matter what your purpose is, as long as what you do contributes somehow in a positive way to the humankind, I know that your soul will be happy. And I also, I'm convinced that some, because some of my clients even say, well, I don't have any talents and like, I don't know what I'm going to do because I, I'm nothing special, right? I believe that everyone is special and everyone has something to contribute. And if they just start to slowly or fast believe that they're here for purpose, for a reason, and that their life counts, that purpose most likely will find them or they will find it, you know, somehow the meeting will happen and not, you know, be... Um, obsessed with lives of others. That's one more, something that I want to touch base on because for a very long while, I was like a reality TV junkie, but I was very, very uh, depressed, thinking that my life is nothing and look at all these people on reality TV, their life is so great. So I was living through their lives 
um, and being them jealous of their lives. Mm -hmm. It's just saying, okay, you know what? I have a great life and I better live it myself and throw away the TV and live your life. Right. And, and I think it's all perspective. And, you know, a couple of years ago, I, I wrote an article on what is success. And, you know, it's very similar to what you're saying in, in the sense that as long as you are putting your 100% and it is serving others and it's something you really feel called to do and enjoy doing, then you're successful. You know, and I hate how society puts those, you know, levels on, you know, so like if, if I work at the, the local convenience or you know I'm not as successful as say that movie producer and yet in my mind if both uh, people are, are doing their hundred percent and love what they do well then you're both a success at, at what you do and, and who is really to judge which is like more successful absolutely I could not agree more and I also believe that success is actually happiness it's not how much money you have in your bank. It's not how big is your house. Because I have many friends and people here in LA, you know, with big mansions and fancy cars, mm -hmm. and they're not happy. And then I have a lot of friends on the opposite end, nothing too fancy, very humble lives, and they're so happy because they found their purpose. They do what they love. They have great health, which is the biggest success, I think, actually, if you are listening to us and you're healthy amazing you're already a huge success and if you're not healthy you have to believe that you will be because it's everything's in our mind like health is starts how we think so yes 100 percent. it's nothing to do with the accolades and amount of money and so-called physical success because you don't know what really that person feels inside like i look at myself i was like the picture of success on the physical plane you know i had a great career i was with a multi-millionaire Wall Street broker relationship for many years. We had everything we ever wanted, like from a physical standpoint. Mm -hmm. People were like, wow, Lena, you really made it. Like your life is the picture perfect life. And behind the closed doors, I was miserable. So so it's nothing to do with what right. the outside looks like. Yeah. And I wish that we could you know, find a way to change that in society so that it it isn't so that, you know, judging of, of a, a stature, um, I, I think we would all be happier people and a, a better society for it. it you know, if, if we just really appreciated what people do and, and what those, those gifts are and, and hearing people say, I don't have any gifts, you know, because they're, they're judging that based on somebody else that they know. You know, instead of elves. Or someone's idea of them, maybe their parents mm -hmm. or spouse or something, versus just, you know, being true to who they are and finding themselves, right? And be just knowing that they're perfect, that there is nothing right. wrong with them. Because universe, God, whatever you believe in, doesn't make mistakes. And he make or she or whatever people believe in makes everyone exactly the way that person was supposed to be and has all the tools, all the talents, all the strength to be successful in their own unique way. Yet they just have to start believing in that. And that's what I didn't have. Like I didn't have peace of mind. My mind was saying to me all the negative things because it's actually funny that you brought this up. It's not in the book, but um, I was remembering now, I am remembering now that my family was like, well, you have to be married by a certain age, have kids by a certain age, I uh, have to graduate from a prestigious university. I actually dropped out because I was so depressed. Like on the second year, I couldn't go through school. Um, so, my, you know, like my family was kind of like, oh, you know, our daughter is a dropout. <laughs> yeah. Like, on the society standpoint, I wasn't that, um, like, you know, successful for a long time. And it really was hard on me saying, wow, you know, like, I am a loser. Like, I am a dropout. I am not. You know, I don't have children. I don't have like this, that, 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 right? By the right. certain, um, and now you know, I still not near. I still don't have children. Still a dropout, but I'm feeling so happy because I do what I love. Yeah. I think to myself that I am a success. I'm grateful mm -hmm. every day to just wake up and have a breath of life, and I'm grateful that I'm healthy, and I think it's already a big success. Yep. Yeah. 
and and, and I totally agree. And I re really hope that people can, message. You know, it, it's that's a wonderful message to put out there um, because we all all in our own way be our own successes. Um, and uh, but I, I think that brings. Yes, that's what I always believe that we have to cheer ourselves up so much and talk yep. to ourselves so much encouragement because all of us just have this negative monkey saying, you're this, you're that, you're that. We have to shut it down. We first have to change how we talk to ourselves inside. Right, exactly. It brings up that point when you were talking about, you know, encouraging people, don't give up hope. Mm -hmm have a, a tip on that or, or a way to help people because you know looking at your history and what you've shared you know i'm sure there were those times when you were tempted to give up hope obviously you didn't and you are who you are today as a result so how do people who you know might be reading your book or listening to this be able to you know not lose that hope that's Wonderful. I'm glad that you're asking me this because yes, there were times, you know, and I'm not going to get too much into my story in reading the book, but five years in LA studying spirituality intensely, they were really tough for me, you know, like from complete like life of abundance to life where sometimes I thought I'm going to have to go to a homeless shelter because I didn't know how to make ends meet here. Um, but because I never gave up on my meditation practice. And mm -hmm. because I knew that that's all I have is a peace of mind. Like if I lose my peace of mind and go cuckoo, then I'm I'm dead. Like I'll be on the streets and I'm dead. Meditate, meditate, meditate. No matter what's happening in your life, it's not what's going on. It's your perception of it and it's your attitude. And nothing bad can happen to a person with positive attitude. And everything bad can happen to a person with negative attitude. And if you're positive in a positive situation, you're gonna like skyrocket. If you're positive in a negative situation, which I had to be for pretty much every day of five years, I had to just say, today I choose to be positive because I don't have a luxury of being negative because mm -hmm. I'm not gonna eat today. <laughs> and literally there were days like that, I'm just like, had to force myself to pretend in my head and in my heart that everything is going to be okay and everything is going to work out. And believe, you know, believe it or not, it did. And faith is what is very important. And I think a lot of people, myself included before, we don't have strong enough faith. Because mm -hmm. look at the reality the way it is right now, right? And you might say, well, how am I going to change? Like, maybe I'm out of job. Like I was, I was fired three times from three different jobs here in LA, or maybe I don't know how to pay my rent. Whatever you're going through right now, if you're going to look at reality the way it is, you're not going to be able to fix it. The only way to fix something negative in your life is by having unshakable faith mm -hmm. that it's going to be just fine. That universe, creator, divine has your back and it's working for you, and it is your friend, and sometimes you have to just go through bad luck, but that bad luck, that problem, is always a solution to a bigger problem. As long as you can remember that, then you will be okay, because maybe this problem is a teacher, this problem is solving something for you that you don't even see, because you don't see the future. Mm -hmm. You just have to have strong faith that no matter what you're going through, you're going to get on top, and especially if you're in the very bottom, like I used to be, I was told by my teacher to celebrate that. Because when you're in the very bottom, good news is you can only go up. Mm -hmm. And that's a good place to be, actually. Exactly. And truly, truly. Mm -hmm. And now I'm like, I'm like, he was right. Like, he was right. Because I didn't really, you know, plan for those things to happen. But the book kind of happened on its own. I found mm -hmm. I'm sure you know you found me and I'm having this you know book signing in New York now things just really start working out but I had to stay positive very for a very long time so whatever you guys are going through just pretend that you already over that problem and mm -hmm. in your mind in your like visualization see yourself over it 
to not focus on your negative reality because it's going to take you nowhere. It's going to just take you more down. And know that you're in the bottom, it means you're going up. So you're yeah. good. Well, and, and that's awesome advice because, you know, it, it's, I, I guess, something easy, but it's very difficult at the time. But if you can just keep reminding yourself, and, and I'm a big burr in self-talk, so the more you can do that positive self-talk, um, as you say, who knows where to go, you know, and uh, you came up from the bottom, you know, and, and yes, you have a book out and you're teaching people in your lives and you know who would have thought you know so keeping that positive attitude is so um, maybe so that we, we don't get too far off or, or forget um, you want to talk about anything uh, that you wanted to uh, bring up absolutely so in uh, in book I'm sharing my one of the most favorite breath works and they're Really, 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 really easy because I'm kind of type of person that I want things to be simple because I believe that simplicity actually works more than complicated stuff. Um, and sometimes your mind wants to complicate things, like oh, if it's too simple, it might not, it might not be true. But just don't go there. Just listen to what I'm about to say and just try. Even if though it's simple, it really works. This breath I've done every single day. For my first year when I learned it first because I really needed to and this breath works on healing negative traumatic memories especially those from your childhood and I believe a lot of us even you know, if you had the most perfect childhood there's still something there that can be cleaned out so mm -hmm. it doesn't stop you in your uh, adult life from being the best you can be right so breath if you can see me now great if you're listening to us just Sit up straight with your spine uh, reaching to the sky. Chin will be slightly in, shoulders will be down and relaxed. You can sit on a chair, you can sit on your mat, as long as your sit bones are firmly planted and you're not like shaky, right? Mm -hmm. The reason that we keep our spine straight during meditation because it connects us from the physical plane to the divine plane, to the unseen plane. Mm -hmm. So this breath is performed with your eyes open and our viewers, listeners can do it for as little as one minute per day. It's mm -hmm. perfect because one minute everyone got. Like you cannot tell me you don't have one minute. Uh, you can go up as long as three minutes if you want to. And uh, basically the mudra, because we work in Nam Yoga, uh, we work with mudras. I say, tell in my book that mudras, they're like symbols. You know, our hands are very powerful. There's a lot mm -hmm. of energy in our hands. And they're like symbols to the universe, what you would like to bring in. So for this mudra, we want to bring more happiness into our lives. And therefore, we're going to work with index fingers of both hands. Index finger stands for planet, oh, there you go, you can see here, right? It stands for planet Jupiter. Jupiter works on physical and uh, spiritual prosperity, and it's a planet of happiness. So you're going to bring both of your, I'm going to make sure you, hold on, this way. Both of your Jupiter fingers up by your sides. Uh, and you're going to look forward and you will take four segmented breath into the nose and one breath out through the mouth. So mm -hmm. like this. So four inhales up, one inhale out. Eyes open and you can put your timer. You don't need the music or anything for that. So you can do it anywhere. Mm. And just, yeah, don't believe me, just try it. Try for a minimum of two months. 120 days is a powerful spiritual number. 40 days to remove something from the divine plane, level of thought. 40 days to remove something from astral plane, level of emotion. And 40 days to cure the new habit, new pattern on the physical. So, yeah, that's my easy tip for our viewers. And you're saying one to three minutes a day is really the length. That's Absolutely, yeah. And it works in that part of the brain that stores the negative memories. You're not gonna recognize yourself after four months. Uh, that that's awesome, and and I see what you're saying by you know sometimes you can't handle something that's so simple, you know. And to me, what what is hard for me to wrap around is the short amount of time span. You know, the the one minute right. to three minute. Um, the other part makes sense. The uh, <laughs> the the shortness. So that that's something I'll give that a shot. And 
you know, because th there's that part of me that says, well, it's got to be longer. It can't be just that short. <laughs> but that's about, you know, I got to keep it simple. So <laughs> but we're going to keep it simple. Do what you say. And it's, it's all about, you know, it's consistency. Like, you know, sometimes people will go like into extremes, right, and do like this, I don't know, like workouts for like three hours a day, and then they drop, right? Right. But it's really not as sustainable if you would just walk 15 minutes every day for the whole year. You actually do your body more good. So that's my belief. You know, some, like I meditate still hours a day, but if some of my clients, they say, well, I only have three minutes, I'm like, then do this breath. Let's start with this breath because in spirituality, in yoga, why it's so important to work with breath, breath is the king of our mind. And our mind is what controls our senses. And when you can control your senses, when you can control your emotions, is that when you can change your depression or any negative emotional challenge you're going through into positivity, into healing, because how we feel is so important, right? Mm -hmm. If you feel depressed you're like, and you think, I'm depressed, I'm depressed, I'm depressed, you're going to be more depressed. But yeah. even if you're not depressed, but you're conscious that you're depressed, you're conscious of your thoughts, you're like, oh, I'm thinking that I'm depressed. Maybe I'm going to force myself to think I am happy, which I have to do sometimes too. I have to just wake up and say, ah, in my head, I'm hearing that I'm not happy. I have to change it up. And you just force yourself to say something like this, you will be happier. So breath work helps you to control your mind and helps you to understand your thought patterns better. Yeah, and, and that is key. You know, all about those thought patterns and that self-talk, you know, and if one to three minutes a day is going to be something that helps to change that, as you said, who doesn't have a minute? You know, I mean, we all live busy lives, but there's got to be a minute somewhere that you can sit spine straight and, you know, do that for a minute. I mean, who can't do that? Absolutely. So no excuses, guys. Everyone can try it. Exactly. Um, and if there is an excuse, send it to us on social media so we can kind of see what you think is an excuse. <laughs> um, so that, that's that, that's excellent. Is um, there something that we haven't touched that you really think uh, you want to make sure gets out to uh, you know the audience? Well, I, I just want to say, first of all, thank you so much. And God bless you. God bless your audience for the opportunity to share my story. Um, and on that note, for a very long time, I didn't think I even wanted to write a book because I'm like, oh, just my little story, you know, like just me healing my depression, my eating disorder, my OCD, my bipolar, my insecurities, <laughs> my suicidal tendencies, but it's still just my little story. Mm -hmm. uh, and then something just switched and I heard that no, like every story counts. And if you're going through something, guys, whoever's listening to us, it means that you're also going through this because you can heal it, first of all, and second of all, because your story counts. And once you master your challenge, you can help others with that same situation. So first of all, believe that whatever you're going through is not forever. Mm -hmm. The universe, God, the creator puts you through it because you can get through it, because you have the strength to get through it, and because you're going to help others with it eventually. Yeah, that, that's excellent. And definitely I encourage people to buy the book. Uh, I yeah. know it's on Amazon. That's uh, where I got it. Um, is it they, elsewhere? Late, oh, my mind, sorry. What was your question? So go ahead. Where else could they find your book? I know, I know it's on Amazon. Yes, that, thank you. That's where I'm selling it. It's available in Kindle or print uh, version. They also could go to elena.la, E-L-E-N-A dot L-A, -E -E uh, where I have a 40-minute gift, 40-minute video with the exercises and music from the book so they can do them with me. And for that, you can just put your email and the video will be sent to you as well. So that will help you with personal practice. Mm -hmm. that, that's, that's a great gift to give people. So um, definitely very helpful. Um, if people want to get a hold of you to learn more about what you do and what you've talked about, what's the best way for them to do that? I would be absolutely happy to connect and answer all kinds of questions. Like it's just my you know, heart's happiness when they and I'm able to help someone else now, it's like, yes, this is why I had to go through all that. So mm -hmm. please reach out to me. 
my email is elena at namyoga, N-A-A-M, yoga, dot com. That's the best way to reach me. You can also follow okay. me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, and write your comments there. It's Elena Vasilenka on all yep. the videos. Yeah, no, that, that's excellent. And I follow you on the Facebook and Instagram. And I, I think it was Instagram first uh, discovered you. So I'm so grateful. This is such a blessing. It's my new year resolution to do more work like that and share the message. And thank you for blessing me with the opportunity. Excellent. Well, and I'm glad that you want to do that because you need to get out there. And, you know, as we talked about everything that you have, you know, said and what you've gone through through is for a purpose and you know this purpose to help others find that happiness um that message needs to get out there so, so you know it's all the book also the that uh, gift of the um video on your website so and again minute a day i mean come on <laughs> that, that can save people right there easy we can't do this for a minute <laughs> so we're going to film we're gonna have like different little videos of everyone doing the collage, one minute of everyone, of all the viewers. If you wanna send us your video, that'll be fun to see it. But there you go. Contact <laughs> us, uh, our social medias or emails and send us a little video of you doing it. And yeah, that, that would be awesome. We could get a whole video collage going. <laughs> <laughs> so, awesome. well, thank you again. I, I really appreciate your time and your, your message and what you're doing. And, uh, you know, hope that you have a wonderful rest of today and, and the weekend and all the best to you. Thank you so much. Same here to you. Pleasure connecting. And I'm sure we'll be in touch more and have a super successful, super happy day. And wishing a lot of happiness to everyone who is listening and, and watching us right now. Great. Everyone's time. All right. Thank you very much. Bye, everyone. Bye, Chris. Bye. Thank you for listening to this episode with Chris Shea. Learn more about Chris Shea by visiting his website, www.lifesjourneyblog.com.